Well, I hope everyone had a very happy holiday, enjoying their time with their family, opening presents under the tree. But now it's time to get back to brass tacks. And let's talk about Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. This is the new Netflix action sci-fi epic, which was directed by Zack Snyder, fresh off the death of the DCEU. And this was actually centered around a pitch that Zack Snyder had made back in the day to Lucasfilm about a standalone Star Wars movie. And looking at the overall vibe of Rebel Moon, it's kind of hard to dismiss that. Okay, so when a colony on the edge of the galaxy finds itself threatened by the armies of the tyrannical regent Balisarius of the Imperium, they dispatch a young woman with a mysterious past to seek out warriors from neighboring planets to help them take a stand. In other words, form a rebellion. Yeah, are you sure I'm just not watching Netflix's Star Wars? Now look, I don't want to sit here and trash Rebel Moon because I honestly found a few pretty enjoyable aspects of it. Like the overall aesthetic and the scope that Zack Snyder is giving you is downright epic. This is a humongous undertaking and a giant project. And visually speaking, you do have all those Snyder-isms that you definitely get in a Zack Snyder movie. He definitely adds his directorial flair to the proceedings, albeit with a few hints of slow motion in there, which I always get a kick out of. I mean, I get it. A lot of people might be annoyed by the overuse of slow motion in Snyder flicks. Slow motion never really bothers me. But what does bother me in the end is that it does ultimately feel like Diet Star Wars. It's like if you go to Walmart and you see this whole set of the Skywalker Saga on Blu-ray and you really want your parents to buy it for you. Like, Mommy, I want to see Rey. I want to see Darth Vader. I want to see all those characters. And then your mom looks at you and is like, No, we have Star Wars at home. That's what Rebel Moon is, guys. Star Wars at home. And I hate to say that because there are some pretty neat characters thrown in here. I really like this robotic creature that we meet along the way that is definitely the heart and soul of this movie to me. But all of this feels like an original Star Wars idea with the Rogue One effect. Because Rogue One, I'll admit, is not a bad movie by any stretch. Gareth Edwards did a really good job directing that thing. And Rogue One is the only Star Wars movie that really feels like it's a war. And it's not that you don't get any war sequences in Rebel Moon because there are definitely some really cool action set pieces. And Snyder once again proves that he is great at directing action. But I don't know, man. A lot of these characters to me just did not have the interest level that I did when I initially watched the first Star Wars movie. And a lot of them just feel like carbon copies of those original Star Wars characters. Take Charlie Hunnam's character, for example. He's really cool. He's kind of a scruffy looking badass. Gee, haven't seen that in sci-fi before. Or heck, you have this empirical villain played by Ed Screen, very over the top. They're an insurmountable obstacle. Their force is called the Imperium. Gee, haven't seen that in science fiction before. Or the fact that this main character is basically just... <laughs> Again, I hate to insult this, but like, this is just Jin Erso at home. And I never thought I would say this, but Jin Erso is a much more interesting character than Korra is. It probably just sounds to you guys like I despise Rebel Moon with a fiery passion. I didn't. I didn't. There were some fun moments in here, man. A couple of the supporting characters I definitely got behind and I understood their story. And I absolutely appreciated the technicals of Rebel Moon. The direction and the cinematography above everything else. I mean, the effects and the shots in here are just gorgeous. But it definitely feels to me like this is so derivative of so many other classic science fiction epics that we've gotten in the past. And science fiction epics that we've fallen in love with in the past. And also, this does not help to the movie's advantage that this has the part one subtitle. So I feel like this next criticism should definitely have an asterisk next to it. But this isn't a complete story. You don't get the full narrative. Yeah, it does feel like it has a cohesive beginning, middle, and end. But we're getting another movie in April. This isn't the full gigantic picture. And I feel like once we do have these movies, and if we do get a part three down the line, once we see this whole story and the trajectory and where it's all leading to, I feel like we can judge Rebel Moon a little bit more fairly. But as it sits, we don't really have the full picture. It just feels like a carbon copy of Star Wars for a lot of people. But all in all, guys, I'm going to give Rebel Moon Part 1 a child of fire a C. Again, not a horrible movie by any stretch. 
If Zack Snyder wasn't directing this movie, I feel like this would have definitely been one of the biggest disasters of the year. And it very easily would have been one of the most laughable movies all year long. But I cannot sit here and hate on this movie just because the filmmaking prowess is certainly there. And above all else, the effort is certainly there. But let me know what you thought of Rebel Moon down in the comments section below. Did this movie make you excited to see part two down the line? What is your favorite science fiction movie of all time? Lots that we can discuss over here and then some, guys. This is a awesome community of film lovers and entertainment lovers alike, and y'all are invited to join us. Especially if you're new, do consider becoming a subscriber today. Tap on that thumbs up as well, that would be a huge help. And stay tuned for more videos hitting this channel very, very soon. Y'all are the best. And with all that being said, back talk, commence.